Keeping your resume up to date is really important, even if you're happy at the place you're currently working. And personally, I'm very happy at the place I'm currently working, but you always want to look out for numero uno, and it's a good way to track progression. So I was updating my resume the other day, and I was thinking very hard about the coding projects that I want to put on there. This was the first time I'd actually really sat and thought about which specific coding projects I want to put on there and why I want to put them on there. I never really thought about it too much in detail before I thought, oh, this is a pretty cool project. Let me slap that on there. But I've come up with a couple of thoughts on this, and I want to hear your opinions as well on what actually makes an impressive coding project in the context of I'm reading about you for the very first time on a resume. Right, because we can think in our heads when we put a project on there, oh wow, this project was so hard, it was so complex, I did all this stuff, and that's context that you have about that project, but it's not necessarily context that's always communicated to the person reading it. So I was thinking about, you know, all these projects I've done, they're pretty cool, they're all this, they're this, they're that, but if I'm reading about this for the very first time, would I actually understand and be impressed by it? So I want to talk about a couple of things on this. Now, I've done coding projects throughout the entire sort of tech stack, right? I've done electronics and firmware projects. I've done full stack web applications. I've built desktop applications. I've done systems programming, built microservices. I've built mobile apps. I've done pretty much the lot. And yeah, I was really thinking hard about what makes each of those projects impressive or special enough that I would tell somebody looking at me for the very first time, I did this. And of course you tailor the projects you put on to the particular role. Like if you're going for a full stack web role, you put your full stack web programs on there, but I'm just talking more generally, right? And what the first thing I wanna talk about is purpose. So your project has to have a reason to exist for it to be impressive in my opinion, from what I've been thinking about. So I want you to think about a to-do list app, right? That's probably the most generic sort of programming project. Everybody makes jokes about it. You know, like baby's first resume project is a to-do list. There's no purpose in a to-do list because there are thousands of to-do lists out there that already do the exact same thing. So the question is, why did you build that? You could argue, well, I built this to-do list app because I want to keep track of my daily activities. But like I said, there are thousands of ones out there that already do the exact same thing. So what makes yours special? Why does it need to exist? It's not actually solving any real world problem that hasn't been solved already. And you could say, well, I did it for fun. And that's true. And I would respect that. But let's be honest, if you're doing projects for fun that have already been made, you know, or there's an equivalent out there that exists, if you're just doing this stuff for fun, let's be honest, you're not writing a to-do app. You're doing something a little bit cooler. Um, so I wanna bring up one of the projects that I ended up selecting to put on my resume that I think has purpose. And that is actually a very old one of mine that I did about five years ago. And in fact, I did a video about this almost a year ago now. Wow, March, 2024, better times, right? <laughs> almost a year ago, wow. Um, but I think it really has purpose. And that is the one where I reverse engineered the LED lighting control system for my Gigabyte graphics card. Why did I have to do that? Because the manufacturer's software, Gigabyte's OC Guru 2, was about 10 years old and unsupported, not getting updates anymore, and it only ran on Windows. You know, nobody wants to run that crusty old piece of software that isn't supported anymore. It probably has all sorts of bugs and flaws and things like that. And plus, I'm a Linux guy, so it wouldn't work for me anyway. So I still wanted to be able to control my graphics card lights. And what I did was I reverse engineered OC Guru 2, figured out how it talked to the graphics card. Spoiler alert, it's on I2C. Figured out the application messaging protocol and how to change the lights so that I could then use the Linux kernel's I2C bus communication stuff to send the exact same commands and change my lights. I released all the documentation, I released an open source application, I did all of that. So that one had a purpose. It was the software control is 10 years old, unsupported, only works on Windows, and it's not going to be workable for users in the current era. So let me build a piece of software to rectify that. That was one of the ones I put on there. I think it demonstrates purpose and technical skill. So those are two things, right? A to-do list app, sure, it demonstrates technical skill. Right? Like you have to have a backend 
probably. <laughs> Unless your thing is going to blank out every time the user refreshes the page, you'd have a backend that stores all of the things, or you're storing it with cookies or something like that, and um, you know, persistent storage. You have JavaScript elements in there, you've got buttons, you've got callbacks, you've got user interaction. That actually does demonstrate technical skill, but it doesn't demonstrate any purpose. So if you're looking at that, you're like, oh, okay, I've seen a million of these. But if you're looking at something with purpose, it doesn't necessarily have the same thing. I want to give, bring up another example. This is another project that I put on my resume that doesn't necessarily demonstrate purpose, but it demonstrates passion and technical skill. So passion is the second thing that I want to talk about. Uh, we're doing the double P's, purpose and passion. So this was something that I talked about just before, right? There are things that do this already, but it was a passion project I did for fun that demonstrated a significant amount of technical skill. And that was building my own home automation engine. So I built up my own application messaging protocol. I wrote all of these different microservices. I wrote a multi-threaded message broker. Um, I did all of this stuff so that I could build a distributed home automation engine that I hosted all on my own hardware. And to this day, it is still running my home automation stuff 24 seven. That is an example of a passion project. There is stuff out there already that does that absolutely. MQTT, Zigbee to MQTT, Home Assistant, things like that all do the exact same thing, but I wanted to do it for fun. I wanted to do it myself. It doesn't necessarily demonstrate purpose, because there is stuff out there that already does it, but it demonstrates passion, unlike a very generic to-do list application. Those were two things, purpose and passion, and technical skill. Three things that you want to hit for coding projects on the resume. Um, there's a lot to be talked for uniqueness, right? So to-do list applications and such are pretty commonplace. If you want your coding projects to stand out, they have to kind of be unique. And I would recommend if you can think of a problem in your own life, and I, I went over this a little bit in a more in more in detail in this video I did, how to actually start a software project again, pretty much a year ago, time flies when you're having fun. But you want to think about pro problems that you have in your own life that you could solve with code. Because think about it like this, you are a software engineer. If there's a problem you're encountering in your life that can be solved with code, nobody else is going to do it for you. You're a software engineer, you write the code to fix that. Another example of a project that I could put on my resume is one with a cool story behind it. So I did a flashcard game in Japan. I wrote a flashcard game to teach me Japanese in about half a week when I was traveling in Japan. Does it have purpose? It does with an asterisk because there are already flashcard games out there that exist like Anki or there's like hiraganaquiz.com, stuff like that. I wanted to teach myself the phonetics of Japanese, so I decided to write this over there. They didn't have some of the features that I wanted. There were some features for my flashcard game that I wanted that they didn't have. So that gives it purpose, even though there are ones out there as well. But what's really stand out about this is the story behind it. So I could put that on my resume and say, while I was traveling in Japan, I wouldn't use this exact wording because it's a bit <laughs> verbose, but while I was traveling in Japan, I wanted to learn the local phonetic language. So in half a week, that's the time constraint there that makes this more impressive. I whipped up a flashcard game and the real world result was that by the end of it, I was scoring 52 out of 52 or however many hiragana there are, I can't exactly remember. And I could read street signs and stuff like that. So that's an example of a real world problem that I had. I want to learn this. And there are some features in these existing ones that I don't want. There's a time constraint. I did this in about half a week. And there's a cool factor. I was traveling in Japan and I wanted to learn how to do this. So I wrote a flashcard game to help me out. So if I'm reading that for the first time, that reads a lot better than I made a flashcard game. Cool, you made a flashcard game. There are so many out there. Why did you make this flashcard game? And it demonstrates passion, you know? It's like I was in my hotel room in Japan and I was coding, writing this flashcard game just for fun. So that demonstrates 
some passion. No, not some passion, some purpose. It demonstrates some purpose, a lot of passion, and a reasonable amount of technical skill. Because it's a game. You've got to handle user input. You've got to display things. You've got to store statistics. You've got to do this and that and the other thing. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, guys. It's like coding projects that actually impress. You want to hit purpose, passion, uniqueness, and cool factor, I would say, are the three things, you know, and technical skills, obviously. So you can have coding projects that demonstrate you know, three out of five or three out of four or however many I just said, um, or you could have two. It depends on how crazy, like think of it as if you're like maxing out stats in an RPG. Like you can have some of these stats for your projects maxed out. Like you could have a full on passion project where it demonstrates a lot of technical knowledge, but there's zero purpose to it. Like my home automation engine, you know, there are things out there that already do that. So there's zero purpose for me to go and make my own but it's technically skilled and it's passionate. You can have things where you've got full purpose behind it, full technical skill, but there are gonna be like very negligible people who will ever use it besides you. Like my graphics card LED reverse engineering project. There's purpose behind that because the alternatives just don't work anymore. Like the old software that Gigabyte ran to control the LEDs. How many people in 2020 still owned a 980 Ti graphics card from 2014? Very few. How many of them were running Linux and so needed to actually use this control software? Probably literally like just me. So the user base for that would be very small, but the purpose was there and the technical skills were there. Was it a passion project? Uh, probably not. It was a little bit of a slog to do, to be honest. So it's not really maxed out in that area. But you can see what I'm getting at. With the Japanese card game, there's a little bit of purpose, there's a lot of passion, and there's a big cool factor. Even if, as a flash card game, it's not as technically impressive as some of my other projects. So that's some of the things that I wanted to talk about today in terms of coding projects, what's actually impressive, and some of the things that I think, personally, for my resume, I want to look at hitting. I've got more projects than that, like I might put my DS mod chip project on there if I'm going for a more electronics role. You can mix and match, right? But you want to be doing projects that demonstrate these things. And if you've got an idea for one but don't know how to start it, like I said, I actually did a full-on 28-minute video or whatever on this about a year ago. Projects, I love them. I'm very passionate about this stuff. It's a hobby. It's a hobby. And it's really, really great. And I just love being able to talk about that with all of you guys, doing projects, thinking about, oh, this is cool. It's really cool that I did that. And I want other people to be able to feel the same way. So let me know how you guys think about this. And yeah, see you around.